Hey, welcome back everybody. This is going to be the next segment of the LS1 build. So if you remember in the last episode, we got the crank laid in the engine. We still have to uh, torque it up and do a few other things to it. And then we're going to go ahead and start assembling our short block. So let's get started. All right, so we've got our crankshaft installed. We've got all of our caps down and seated and we've snugged the bolts up. We haven't torqued them yet. One thing that I think I should point out here is the caps are numbered from the factory. If you look right here, you're going to see a number one. And then of course back here we got a number two. And then as we keep going back, we have three, four. Now, the one thing I want to point out here, and this kind of confuses people, if you go back to the number five cap in the back of the engine, there is no number on this side. The number is actually over here. So this cap, you see the ears are facing in on the front and these ears kind of face toward the back of the engine the opposite side of the cap has a couple dimples on it here these these two dimple areas you can see all four of these have them but if you look on the rear cap you can see that the number five is over here one through four is here and you can actually see this cap is flipped you got the two dimple marks up here and over on these four caps your dimples are over here now you can if you, this has screwed a lot of people up. They actually have put this cap on backwards, but it's pretty obvious when you do because the ears here are sticking out into the seal surface area and most likely the crank is, is not gonna rotate. So, so you wanna make sure you get that cap on backwards. It's the one oddball cap and it goes the opposite way of the rest of them. All right, so now we're gonna torque these fasteners to specifications. Now the specifications on the LS1 are a little bit different than your traditional early small block and that is we have to use a torque angle gauge on these and I'll show you how we do that. All right, so the tightening sequence on the LS1 guys starts in the middle and you stagger back and forth to the outsides. The requirements for torquing these is we're gonna start with the center bolts and we're gonna do those first and then we're gonna move to the outer bolts. So the first torque spec we have is 15 foot pounds. So we're just gonna torque all these caps to 15 foot pounds in order. That's just to snug them up. And I've already got all these torqued to 15. I'm just gonna go through and double check here. All right, so that's 15 foot-pounds on all of those. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to, to torque these to the correct angle. But before we do that, we wanna make sure that our thrust bearing is set here. The best way to do that is just take right here with a screwdriver and just pry that crank back and forth. And that way it's gonna set that through. It's gonna align the two halves of that thrust bearing. And we also need to make sure that we have adequate end play here. So now we've got our center bolts torqued. We got our thrust bearing uh, halves aligned and we checked our end play and we're within spec. Now the next step is critically important. GM wants you to use a torque angle on these bolts. To do that, we're gonna use a torque angle gauge. This is a torque angle gauge that you can buy from uh, online from Powerhouse or Summit or anybody like that. And this is a gauge that's gonna tell us. Now, the spec for these bolts is 80 degrees, 15 foot-pounds plus 80 degrees. And I, I usually use a breaker bar for this. So we're gonna take our 13 millimeter, and this has a, a stopper on it. And what you wanna do is just set that to the point where you're gonna be able to get your 80 degrees or you can even hold it. So we're gonna start at zero here. Now you can put this, so now we're gonna start at zero and we wanna to go to 80 degrees, all right? Here we go. So there's 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. There's 80 degrees right there. So you just gotta repeat that for each one of these bolts. We're gonna, we're gonna go back to zero here. We wanna zero out our, our gauge. And we're gonna tighten it right to 80 degrees. And that's it. So you just repeat that for all the inner bolts, and then you're gonna come back and you're gonna tighten the outer bolts 
to 15 foot pounds as well but when you yield the outer bolts guys you're only going to yield these to 53 degrees that's what gm specs say so we're doing 15 foot pounds plus 80 degrees and we come back on the outers and we do 15 foot pounds plus 53 degrees and then of course the out the the side bolts you want to torque those as well i got new ones i'll show you those and the side the, the cross bolts here are are going to be 18 foot pounds no yielding just straight 18 foot pounds hi right, guys so we've got all of our bolts uh the the lower bolts here torqued 15 foot pounds on the center bolts and then 80 degrees and then 15 foot pounds on the outer bolts and 53 degrees i also went to the chevrolet dealership down the street and i got the the side bolts gm recommends that you replace those i always just put new ones in because these have fresh sealer on them you can reuse the old ones, but you got to seal them up and stuff. These, you just put a little dab of oil on the threads. You put them in, torque them to 18 foot-pounds, and they're not going to leak. So always just put a little dab of oil on these just so they don't go in dry. And then just go ahead and get them started into your main caps. These cross bolts, you want to start in the middle. They're going to take a 10 millimeter socket. So we're just going to go up and right there, 18 foot-pounds. And just start in the center and work your way. To the outsides. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side of the block. And that's, that's basically it. Your crankshaft is installed. So go back and double check. Make sure you got all these to 18 foot pounds. And that's it guys, our crankshaft is installed in the LS1. Okay, so the next thing here guys, is our piston and rod assemblies. Now a word of advice on the cylinders, we have thoroughly cleaned this block. Take some WD-40 and just wipe out these cylinder bores before you go, if, in case any residual dust or anything got on this thing. Always wipe the cylinder bores out really well. Make sure there's nothing coming off of there. You see that kind of black stuff there? We want to wipe these out until you get nothing but clean WD-40 on this white paper towel. So we've, we've got a little bit of nasties coming out of there. This thing has to be spotlessly clean. And that'll build up on there just from the block sitting around it for a day or two after the final wash. So keep spraying it and keep whitening it wiping it until your towel has nothing on it except clean WD-40 so you can see our towel there is pretty clean it just has WD-40 on it now we are ready to install our piston and rod assembly so I like to orientate the engine like this I'll put this first one in here, but you can see where that journal is down there. You want to turn that crankshaft so that that journal is about at bottom dead center. It's right down at the bottom of its travel, and it's about in the middle of the bore. And that's going to give us a good shot for that piston and rod assembly. Then we just take our first piston and rod assembly here. Now remember, the notch on the front of the piston always goes to the front of the engine, and also the flat side of the rod always goes to the front. So the notch and the flat side should be on the same side of the rod. If they're not, the rod's backwards. So you can see how this is rounded over here. The rounded side goes back, and that flat side there goes front, as well as the, the notch on there. Now, you want to stagger your ring end gaps. So we got our end gaps here, and you can see we've got both of our gaps there. You want to leave that second gap right about there, and you want to stagger this one all the way to the other side. Stagger those ring end gaps. Make sure that you have some engine oil lubrication on the bearing. And we're going to take, and we're just going to spray a little WD-40 on those rings and the skirts. We don't want them to go in there dry. Then we're going to take the appropriate ring compressor. This is a tapered cone. So we go on from the bottom and the big side of the cone goes up. And we are just going to very carefully work our rings 
into that cone and now that we, we've gotten to that point you very gently insert your piston and connector rod into the bore just like that and let your cone sit flush down against the bore and then at that point we're just going to gently tap our piston and rod assembly into the cylinder like that now you can see I've got my hand over here. I've, I'm hanging on to that connecting rod on the back side. Be, you want to be careful that you don't smash that into the crank. So let's now my piston is in there, and as you can see, my connecting rod is right there. As I go down into that cylinder, you want to be really careful here that you don't jam the edge of this connecting rod into that crank and damage it. So we're just going to go in, make sure you hold it, just go right over the crank like that, and everything will be fine. So you can see that our the flat spot of the rod is facing uh, toward the front of the engine. And now we're gonna put our cap on and torque it up and we'll be in business. So we made sure we put engine oil on our bearing. And again, the flat side of the rod is gonna go to the front and also the, the notches, the bearing notches, locating notches, they're gonna be on the same side of the rod here. So we're just gonna very carefully install our cap on there, get the bolts in, get them started. We're just going to take our 11 millimeter socket and we're going to snug them up. I'm not going to torque them just yet. Right now I'm just going to get them snug and you can move this crank if you need to to get to the other one. So now we've just snugged our bolts up, right? Make sure it has side to side movement. And you also want to make sure that the crankshaft rotates with no binding or anything like that. This one feels really good. So now we're going to, I want to talk to you about torquing this because there is a torque angle on the rods as well. So once again, if we look in the GM service manual, they want you to torque these to 15 foot pounds, just like we did the mains. That's just to get it snug. And then we go into our torque angle. So we're going to come in here and not very much that's it right there 15 foot pounds torque it up now we're going to get our torque angle gauge on here and we're going to go ahead and finish that up the requirement for the rods we got our torque angle gauge on here is 15 foot pounds plus 60 degrees so you can see i'm on zero there i'm going to make sure i hold my tool in place and i'm just going to go the additional 60 degrees on that rod bolt That's 60 degrees right there. And we're gonna go an additional 60 degrees on that torque angle gauge. And that is the correct torque for these rods. Make sure you still have side clearance. Make sure the engine rotates without any binding. Feels really good. And that is your connecting rod and piston installation. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put all the other seven in but the procedure is exactly the same. And once I get those in, we'll come back and take a look at where we're at and uh, we'll move on from there. All right, guys, so there's your short block. So we've got all the piston and rod assemblies in. And remember, flat spot of the rod here faces forward. So you can see every single one of these has the flat spot facing forward. We've torqued all the rods and yielded them to, yielded them to 60 degrees. Now another thing you want to make sure you do is make sure you have rod side clearance here. I've already gone in and checked it with a feeler gauge. All these rods need to move back and forth and these all have the rod side clearance they need but pull those rods apart and take a feeler gauge. And make sure all the rods move independently of each other. These all do. So we got good rod side clearance. Now we can move on. Everything went together really smoothly. Didn't have any problems. Turned out really nice. I'm very happy with the way this short block turned out. Looks like we've got the beginnings of a, a really nice engine here.